Men have been battling each other in the skies for three quarters of a century. This program will examine the weapons used in these struggles, the fighter aircraft. The fighter is a machine both lethal and beautiful. It is the most versatile of modern combat aircraft. It can be used to fight other aircraft or to attack targets on the ground. Traveling at speeds up to 1500 miles an hour, the modern fighter is armed with a deadly assortment of guns, missiles and bombs. Fighters operate in the most hostile conditions, over the sea, in the dark and on the edge of space. There is a certain nostalgia associated with the simple biplane fighters of World War I. Brave, chivalrous pilots took to the sky to wage man-to-man -man combat, free from the horrors of the trench war below. They were the knights of the air. The reality of World War I combat was hardly that glamorous. The early fighter pilots were woefully unprotected. An efficient parachute had not yet been invented, so there were no means to escape a burning aircraft. It took remarkable talents to fly these early planes and to stay alive in the deadly arena of air combat. In the years since World War I, fighters became larger and faster, but less agile. In recent years, new technologies have made high-speed maneuver possible again. While today's fighter designs are remarkably maneuverable, their designs are aerodynamically unstable. They are, however, safe and easy to fly due to a new flight control system called fly-by-wire. A computer controls all flight surfaces. A pilot cannot possibly make all the minute adjustments necessary to keep the plane stable during high-speed maneuvers using conventional controls. But the computer can be programmed to adjust several control surfaces simultaneously to give the pilot the desired maneuver without the airplane going out of control and crashing. With a World War I biplane, there was a constant contest between the pilot and plane just to keep it in the air. In a modern jet fighter, the machine responds to the flick of a wrist. For today's pilots, one of the most notable improvements is the heads-up display, which puts all vital flight information in the pilot's field of vision, much like a screen readout on flight simulator video games. Perhaps the most obvious distinction between the classic fighters of World War I and today's combat aircraft is speed. A modern fighter can fly at Mach 2, twice the speed of sound or nearly 1,500 miles an hour. That would be only two hours from New York to Los Angeles. In fighter combat, there are advantages to high speeds, but there are also penalties to be paid. One of the penalties of high-speed maneuvering is the tremendous pressure, or G-force, which is exerted on the pilot. These forces can be so severe that the pilot can black out and lose consciousness. A mystique of glamour and adventure clings to the fighter pilots like no other soldier. But contrary to their popular image as devil-may-care adventurers, today's fighter pilots require an extraordinary amount of technical skill as well. Their aggressiveness in the sky must be offset by the patience to learn the details of their aircraft. It takes dedication and years of training and practice and costs about a million dollars per pilot. No Air Force is willing to waste that kind of money on an immature hotshot.
space fighters come in a bewildering variety of shapes and sizes, with price tags as high as $50 million. Many air forces operate several types of fighters. In the United States Air Force, three aircraft types are used as strike fighters. The F-16 fighter bomber and the A-10 tank buster for the close air support role, and the F-111 strike fighter for long-range missions. Short and medium range missions are the task of the bantamweight F-16 Fighter Falcon. This fighter bomber is not only capable of carrying out ground attack missions, which are its specialty, but its speed and maneuverability make it a ferocious close range dogfighter, quite capable of defending itself from enemy fighters. The A-10 Thunderbolt has been specifically designed for tank hunting and is one of the few jet aircraft with armor to protect its pilot, engines, and other vital elements from ground fire. The A-10 Thunderbolt II, better known to its pilots as the Warthog, is one of the oddest looking strike aircraft in the world. Projecting from its blunt nose is a Gao-8 Gatling gun, specially designed to destroy armored vehicles by firing its depleted uranium projectiles at a rate of 70 per second. The Warthog is a slow aircraft, as it was designed specifically to hunt and attack tanks. Fast strike fighters have a nearly impossible time dealing with tanks. Moving at hundreds of miles an hour, faster jets have a hard time finding relatively small targets such as tanks. And tanks are so heavily armored that they require a direct hit to be destroyed. The A-10, although large and slow, is graceful and maneuverable at low altitudes in a manner not found in faster jets. missions are the work of the F-111 strike fighter, sometimes nicknamed the Aardvark due to its long, droopy nose. It is a substantially larger aircraft than the F-16 or A-10 and was designed from the outset to operate in all weather conditions, day or night. The F-111 strike fighter is designed for deep attack far behind enemy lines in the battlefield interdiction role. Special aircraft, designated wild weasels, are used to eliminate enemy air defense gun and missile systems which might threaten the F-111s or other aircraft. The EF-111 Raven provides electronic jamming services to blind enemy radar. The Aardvarks, Warthogs and Falcons can be supplemented by other types of aircraft. Some units of the United States Air National Guard fly the A-7 Corsair II attack aircraft, often spending time overseas supporting planes based in Europe, where aircraft such as British Tornadoes can be seen mingled amongst the American fighters. The United States Air Force also operates the F-15 Eagle. The Eagle is a larger fighter than the F-16 and its specialty is aerial combat. It has a more powerful radar to seek out enemy fighters at great distances and carries a wider selection of weapons. The F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon fighters can perform both air defense and air superiority missions and can easily be distinguished by the Eagle's pair of tail fins, whereas the Falcon has just a single fin. Like the Air Force's F-16, the Navy's F-18 Hornet Strike Fighter can attack ground targets or other aircraft. 
Navy fighters must be built to withstand the forces of a carrier's steam catapult, which hurls the fighters off the deck at nearly 150 miles an hour. Carrier fighters must also be heavily reinforced to withstand the severe shock of landing on an aircraft carrier. A Navy fighter will make its landing at about 125 miles an hour and come to a screeching halt in only a few seconds. The Hornet's bigger brother is the F-14 Tomcat, star of the hit movie Top Gun. The Tomcat is designed for very long-range aerial combat. With its power radar, the Tomcat can simultaneously locate and attack up to six enemy aircraft from up to 100 miles away. One of the more likely enemy aircraft a Tomcat might encounter is a MiG-29. The MiG-29 Fulcrum is the latest product of the Mikoyan Design Bureau. The Fulcrum was developed in the mid-1970s for the Soviet Air Force during the Cold War. The MiG-29 compares very favorably to Western aircraft such as the F-16 or the F-18 Hornet as far as high speed and maneuverability are concerned. One of the more breathtaking maneuvers performed by the MiG test pilots is a hammerhead stall where the pilot actually allows the fighter to slide backwards for a few moments before regaining speed. This maneuver is all the more remarkable considering that the current version of the MiG-29 does not use advanced computerized fly-by-wire flight controls as on the F-16 or the F-18. The Soviet designers typically use less advanced technologies than on comparable American designs, but they exploit the older technologies to the fullest extent possible so that they offer performance comparable to more advanced aircraft. The MiG-29 has an advanced ejection seat, which demonstrated its effectiveness during a freak accident in the 1989 Paris Air Show. The right engine failed when it ingested a bird. Remarkably, the pilot survived without a single broken bone. Let's see that again in slow motion. The pilot's parachute barely managed to open fully since he ejected at only 300 feet, a real credit to modern ejection seat design. By the late 1940s, all of the new jet aircraft were being equipped with ejection seats, and the new invention had come just in the nick of time. In 1950, war broke out in Korea. The Korean War was the first conflict in which jet aircraft predominated. And it was the first time that ejection seats were widely used in combat. American pilots flying F-86 Sabres tangled with MiG-15 fighters flown by Chinese and Russian pilots. Let's see how an ejection seat works. After having pulled the ring, it will take only two seconds for the pilot to be ejected clear of the aircraft. Once free of the cockpit, a rocket engine will fire. After this occurs, the critical parachute phase begins. First, a small drogue chute will be released to prevent the seat from tumbling. Once the speed is sufficiently reduced, the seat automatically releases the pilot's harnesses and separates the pilot from the seat. With the seat clear, the main parachute begins to deploy. The 
the modern ejection system is more than just a parachute. In the event of landing in the water, it contains an emergency pack with flotation equipment and survival supplies. Modern ejection seats have added a critical measure of safety to the dangerous business of flying today's warplanes. The success of today's seats give the pilot essential reassurance when the need arises to eject. The single-seat fighter aircraft has dominated air combat since the earliest days of air warfare. Fitted with bombs or other types of weapons, the fighter can also attack ground targets. In this ground attack role, it has often been called a fighter bomber or strike fighter. Today's strike fighters differ enormously in their configurations and capabilities. They range from relatively simple aircraft, often derived from trainers, to enormously complex attack aircraft, specially designed for the ground attack role. The United States is not alone in the use of strike fighters. In England, the Hawk is a popular choice, not only as a short-range air defense fighter armed with sidewinder missiles, but is also used as a trainer aircraft. It has been built in ground attack and single-seat fighter versions as seen here. Probably the best known use of the Hawk is by the RAF's precision flying team, the world-famous Red Arrows. Another British strike fighter is the Tornado. The Tornado was designed from the outset as a multi-purpose aircraft. The Tornado GR1 has a terrain-following ground attack type of radar. It is designed to allow the Tornado to fly safely at very low altitudes at speeds of over 500 miles per hour. The idea behind this tactic is that the tornado can remain hidden from enemy anti-aircraft radars by staying low to the ground. The radar on the Tornado GR1 can be set to a terrain following mode, which guides the aircraft over the ground at a predetermined height to avoid major obstructions. The Harrier vertical takeoff jet was also designed in Britain but is widely used by the United States Marine Corps. The only other comparable jump jet is the Soviet Navy's Yak-38 Forger. The Harrier was developed to fulfill a very special requirement. In modern air wars, air bases are a prime target. If the runways can be put out of action, the high-performance jet fighters will be unable to take off and land. The Harrier avoids this problem with its vertical takeoff and landing features. It can take off like a conventional jet, and its Rolls-Royce engine is specially configured so that the exhaust can be vented downwards, enabling the Harrier to take off and land vertically. A Harrier can operate from a small clearing near the battle area, regardless of the conditions of local runways.
The Marines' interest in the Harrier can be traced to their special role in America's armed forces. The Marines have traditionally been required to carry out combat assignments thousands of miles from major bases. The Harrier fits into the Marine operations since it can operate from small carriers called amphibious assault ships. And once the Marines have secured a beachhead, the Harriers provide close air support from the beachhead area itself. In 1978, the U.S. Force contracted the famous Skunk Works at Lockheed Aircraft to begin design of a stealth strike fighter, codenamed Senior Trend. Unlike earlier planes, the Senior Trend would be designed from the ground up with low observability features. Tests had shown that by carefully shaping the contours of the fuselage, the aircraft's radar cross-section could be reduced dramatically. This resulted in the very unusual shape of the Senior Trend later named the F-117A. The first flight of the F-117 took place in June 1981. The program was so secret that pilots recruited for the program were not told their actual assignment. It was cloaked under a fictitious program for several years. As unique as the F-117 appears, its novelty is only skin deep. To speed up development of this revolutionary new design, many of its internal components came from other successful aircraft programs. In 1983, the first stealth fighters were in service. Their pilots quickly dubbed them the Black Jet. The nickname Black Jet stems from its special black paint finish, codenamed Iron Ball. This type of paint reportedly helps diffuse radar reflections. The F-117 Black Jet roams the skies, unable to be seen by enemy radars. Jet will go down in the pages of aviation history as a pioneer of stealth technology. But it is not the last word in stealth aircraft. Other combat aircraft are under development, such as the YF-22 and the YF-23 advanced tactical fighters. Such aircraft are being developed because both the F-15 and F-16 designs are approximately 20 years old. The Air Force hopes to replace them later in the decade with the Advanced Tactical Fighter, the ATF. Edwards Air Force Base has been the center for testing the new design. The runways and taxiways of Edwards Air Force Base are constantly abuzz with the sound of aircraft. Through the morning, T-38 jet trainers take off, giving pupils at the test pilot school an opportunity to escape the classroom for a few hours. Sharing the runways are experimental and training aircraft from NASA's nearby research facilities. The distinctive white and blue paint schemes of the NASA birds stand out from the military garb of the Air Force aircraft. New aircraft designs, as well as updates of existing models, are put through their paces by the test pilots at Edwards Air Force Base. Each year, only 25 pilots are selected for this demanding assignment. The nature of modern test flying demands not only flying experience, but considerable scientific and engineering training. The role of the test pilot is not merely to fly the aircraft, but to carefully monitor the aircraft and all its complex electronic systems. 
The demand for strong engineering and science backgrounds stems from the growing complexity of modern aircraft. The popular image of the test pilot is a brave adventurer pitting his wits flying a dangerous aircraft on a risky mission. Times are changing in the world of airplanes, and the right stuff is changing too. Flying ability is no longer enough. It takes extraordinary skills to be one of today's top test pilots. The ATF program began in 1981 as a competitive development effort with two industrial teams designing two different aircraft, the YF-22 and YF-23, to meet the Air Force requirements. The Air Force was looking for major breakthroughs in fighter design compared to the older F-15 Eagle. They wanted the new fighter to incorporate as many stealth features as possible without compromising the aircraft's performance. Earlier stealth aircraft, such as the F-117, were really ground attack aircraft, not intended to dogfight other aircraft. The earlier stealth configurations, as on the F-117, were ill-suited to a fast, maneuverable fighter. So a new generation of stealth technology was needed. Stealth is intended to reduce the aircraft's visibility on enemy radar screens. This is critical in modern dogfighting. Radars give fighters the ability to see one another beyond human eyesight. And radar is used to guide long-range missiles against opposing fighters. By reducing radar visibility, the stealth fighter pilot can see his opponent first and shoot him down with long-range missiles before the opponent's radar can spot his stealth aircraft. In pilot's lingo, stealth gives the fighter first look, first kill, the ability to spot the enemy first and shoot him down first. Both the YF-22 and YF-23 were put through their paces at Edwards to see if they met the demanding requirements for a new ATF fighter design. Both designs satisfied the requirements. And in 1991, the YF-22 design was selected as the winning contender for the Air Force's new fighter. The F-22 remained in test at Edwards to finalize the design before further development and production could begin. The F-22 ATF will continue the strong tradition of American aviation excellence into the 21st century. Predicting the future of fighter aircraft is risky business. Few things seem certain. The fighter of the future is likely to be faster, more maneuverable, more sophisticated, and more lethal. And for the short term, it will be piloted by humans. The near future is classified. The future is science fiction.